people here are so mean in Germany. I just can't take it anymore. Hello, 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 and welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me, my name is Jenna. I am a Canadian who has been living here in Germany since 2014, and I share all of my culture shocks and all of my stories about being an international living here in Germany over here on this channel. If you're moving yourself and you want more information, don't forget to check out lifeingermany.com. Today, I wanna to dedicate this video to those of you who are moving to Germany soon. There are things that you need to know before coming to Germany. Whether you're coming to live here or you're coming to visit, this will make your experience much, much nicer if you know, if you're well prepared and you understand what to expect. <laughs> So before I start, for those of you who are subscribed to this channel and want to know more about why the heck am I still in my old filming studio? Well, I have actually indeed moved to our new place, but we have this apartment until the end of August. So I am using it up as much as I possibly can. And this is the only two things still hanging, three things still hanging on my wall so that it didn't look super barren. But it might sound a little bit more echoey today than it usually does because Things are progressing and we are moving and I can't wait to film my very first video in my new studio. But for now, this is our final video, guys. Our final video here in my old apartment. So this is a very, very exciting milestone for me. Let's start off with the biggest thing that you should probably know. Here in Germany, people speak English. They do. However, I do not think that you should expect people to speak English. It is okay if they say, oh, don't worry, if I speak English, no problem. But I think the expectation that people speak English sometimes really annoys the Germans. It would probably bother me too if somebody came to Canada and was speaking German and assumed that I would speak German. I know it's a bit different because English is an international language, but guys, try to learn a little bit of the language before you get here. This is something that I did not do, so I'm just saying from my own experience, it really would have helped had I have known just a few words to get started. And there are a lot of new fun ways to do that, which leads me to introducing you guys to today's sponsor. They are super, super cool, so I'll let you know a little bit about them. I did learn German in school, in classes, and that definitely really helps being able to interact with people, but you always need something more, something like, I mean, for me watching binge-worthy shows and being able to watch that in German and actually learn the language in a fun environment too was something that was super, super important for me. So LingoPie does exactly this. This is something that I wish I had when I originally moved to Germany or even before I moved to Germany. So LingoPie at the moment is the world's only platform where you can actually watch movies and shows in order to learn the language. I'm not talking about those like boring clips where they're like, Apple, Apple, <laughs> you know, like actual TV shows. They are working with different TV studios, TV productions, and uploading these on a monthly basis so you can watch the shows and learn along. So it's actually very different than being in class or watching videos on your own with subtitles because it's somewhat of a mixture of the two, which I find really, really neat. So basically what you can do is you'll hop onto your subscription as you normally would with any paid subscription video platform. You will pick whichever show you wanna watch. And once you've actually clicked onto that show, you can then choose the way that the subtitles might work best for you. You can choose to have English subtitles, you can choose to have the German subtitles, and then you can actually go and click on a word. The show will stop, you can click on that word, it will translate it for you, and then that will actually be added to your word list. So basically at the end of a video, once you're finished a show or you're finished a movie, at the end, they actually integrate all of those words that you clicked on that you learned throughout the show is then compiled at the end into different interactive video flashcards. And then your word list is also actually going to grow. And it's not just the words, but the grammar tips as well. So I've actually only tried out the German version of LingoPi, but you can actually access with your subscription a huge selection of French, Spanish, Portuguese, and Italian videos and movies and shows and comedies and cartoons and what have you. You can access those all over on the LingoPi platform. So in case you're interested in checking them out before we move forward, I've actually included a link below. You guys can go ahead and test out that on a seven day trial. And I've also included a personalized discount link down for all of my subscribers below. So 
Point being, please, please, please learn a little bit of German before you arrive. Even if you're just traveling here, it really does go a long way. So another thing you really got to get yourself used to is depending on where you're coming from, the people in the country might be very, very different than they are here in Germany. For me, this was one of my biggest culture shocks. And that's when you're walking down the street or you're on a bus. I've mentioned this in a few videos before, but people don't just smile at you on the street. You know, they're, Germans don't smile for any reason. You have to give them a reason to smile. You know, you don't just walk past them and be like, hello. <laughs> I still do it, to be honest. Um, and I still love doing it. And sometimes it really makes their day if I do that. However, what I'm trying to say is just be aware that it's fine if you want to do it. It's just you might not get that response that you're expecting back. Don't take it personally and don't let it ruin your experience while you're here. It's something that's so small and it shouldn't ruin your experience. But don't use this to define Germans as being grumpy or standoffish or whatever you want to call it because that's just not in their nature. They're, this is not what you do here in Germany. So again, it's okay if you do it, but don't expect it from others and just realize that that's not them being rude to you. It's just simply something that they're not accustomed to. Another thing that I would say, and you've probably heard this before, is that Germans can be very, very honest. They are very straight up, which is actually something that I've really grown to appreciate. But when you first get here and you meet a few Germans and you ask a few questions and you don't really want to know the hard, cold truth, don't ask the question. That kind of seems rather silly to say because obviously, why would you ask a question if you don't want the real answer to it? But we do this a lot in North America. We'll be like, like, am I wearing the proper attire to be at this restaurant right now when you're like with a new German friend? They might actually say, well, no, you could have been a little bit more formal or whatever. They're going to be honest. So again, don't take this as them being rude. This is just the cold hard truth. Another thing that I find really interesting is that I personally think that Germans smoke a lot. They smoke a lot of cigarettes and they smoke at a very, very young age in comparison to North America. If you ask a German, do many Germans smoke, they will probably give you a different answer. It just depends on where you come from and what you're used to. I wasn't used to seeing so many people smoking all the time, everywhere. But in North American culture, I notice that a lot of people, when they come to visit me or they come to visit my friends, they'll sit down at a restaurant and there'll be somebody smoking next to them and they'll just look over and be like, <coughs> how can they possibly be allowed to smoke here? I just don't understand it. They get so worked up and so upset, like, as if the person smoking is really trying to like piss them off or something. But it's very common here. It's just kind of like ingrained in the culture here. and. As many Germans will probably tell you, the rate of people who are actually smoking has significantly decreased. So you'll see a lot less cigarette butts on the floor than you did before. However, for people coming from North America, for example, there are still a significant more amount of people that smoke here than they do back home. And when we're talking about being in a restaurant, let's mention customer service too. I hope that you've heard this one before. Customer service, guys, is very different here in Germany. A lot of Germans like to say, well, the reason is because we are not getting paid significantly in tips. That is true. We actually tip less here in Germany. I would say the average is typically around 10% in North America. We're anywhere up to 15, 20, sometimes even 25%. When I left, it was 15%, but now I notice some of my friends even paying 30%, which to me is absolutely bonkers. But good news, when you come to Germany, you don't have to tip as much. Bad news, the customer service isn't that great here. That is because they do not need to suck up to you, tell you all the special daily meals and deals on their menu today. This is just not a thing here. You are not going to ask if you want ice cubes in your drink with or without. Would you like a piece of mint on top with or without? Would you like anything on the side of your meal? This does not happen here. You can say what you want, if it doesn't work, they'll be like, no, we can't take the bacon off that salad for you, sorry. They don't jump through as many loops as they really would in North America. Also, again, this shouldn't make or break your experience here in Germany. Germany is an amazing country. Customer service just is kind of lousy here, but you kind of just get used to it and it's okay. <laughs> Another tip for being social here in Germany, if you're at a restaurant or if you're shopping, you're at a kiosk, whatever, perhaps getting a Wegbier because you can drink in public here in Germany and Wegbier, we call that in Dusseldorf basically a beer foot away. So like you'll grab a beer at a kiosk and then you'll go for a walk with your friends, maybe to the water 
watch the sunset, go to the next bar, whatever. But yeah, so when you're buying like a beer at a kiosk or you're getting some fast food at a Greek restaurant, maybe a Duna, whatever, they may or may not take credit card. It really, really depends. Again, if you ask a German, they'll be like, what are you talking about? They accept credit card everywhere because it's really advanced in the last few years. Like a lot more places take debit card and credit card than they used to. There are many places that still don't accept credit card, even as brand new hipster restaurants, not all of them take credit cards. So that's just something you have to expect. I know one of my family members really like flipped out because he had no cash. And I think it just was embarrassing at that point in time when he realized he got the bill, he had no cash. They didn't take American Express. They didn't take credit card. They didn't even take debit card. And his debit card was Canadian anyway. So maybe it was just an embarrassing moment. So just, I would always say, make sure you have at least like 40, 50 bucks on you at all times in case you need to get a snack somewhere or you wanna go out for dinner and they don't take credit card. Many of you will likely also be renting a car in Germany. The transportation system is amazing, so that is not always necessary. But one thing I'd like to warn you about before you get here is the prices of rental cars. Rental cars are actually very, very affordable. And this is something I really love here in Germany because it also means that we can travel longer, more often. However, if you know how to drive standard, most people drive with the stick or Schalter, as they would say in German. This is a much more affordable option. A lot of us in North America drive automatic, which here is actually not all that often. That also means that the cost of renting an automatic car here in Germany is a lot higher than renting a standard vehicle. So if you do know how to drive standard, if you do know how to drive with stick shift, then I would recommend getting a manual car because you can actually save a significant amount of money here, which might also give you more opportunity to explore this beautiful country and be able to save a little bit of money as well. And a good last tip for you would definitely be, you've probably heard that you're not allowed to jaywalk in Germany or walking on the grass is verboten. <laughs> These things aren't as crazy as people really do make them seem, but it is worth mentioning. So walking on the grass, I mean, in a park is usually no problem. I wouldn't say that that's something you need to worry about too much. Don't be walking on someone's lawn. I think nobody would appreciate that. But jaywalking is definitely, um, it's a thing here, but it's definitely a lot more frowned upon. So don't be surprised if you decide to walk across when the walking man is red, uh, that somebody yells at you. Probably gonna be somebody nearing the age of 70, 75, 80. <laughs> but um, I did it a few times when I first got here. Uh, now I'm just kind of like trained really not to cross the street on a red light. Germans watching this video are gonna be like, well, why would you do that? That's just ignorant. And I know, but it's just something we do in Canada. I don't know why we just cross at a red light when there's no cars, we're just like, okay, I'll, I'll just cross. And it doesn't really seem like a bad thing, but here it's really, people do really follow the rules. Like, I mean, you can do it if you want to, you might get in trouble for it, but you also might get yelled at. And that's something that happened to me quite often when I first got here. And that's why I've since stopped because every time someone yelled at me, I'd just be like, <gasps> The people here are so mean in Germany. I just can't take it anymore. And that's not fair because they have different rules. They have different expectations. You know, their culture is different here. So once you realize that they're not being mean, I mean, yes, perhaps they should be minding their own business, but they don't mean it to really like piss you off and get into your soul and make you hate being here in Germany. That's just common nature here. People aren't used to people really like always constantly jaywalking and crossing the street. What they do often do, at least here in Dusseldorf, is jaywalk when there's no crossing light because sometimes there's just spots where there really should be a crosswalk and there's just not people just cross. So you might not get yelled at for that, but you're definitely probably gonna get yelled at if you cross at a red light. So just be aware. I wanted to make this video because I really, I do, I love Germany. Germany is an amazing place to live, an amazing place to visit. The people are incredible. But when you first come here, sometimes people are a little taken back by the way that people respond, the way that people react here. And this video was not to scare you or say don't come to Germany. It's things that you just need to be aware of so that you don't take them personally when you come here and you don't think that people are intentionally trying to be mean to you when they say something that you really did not expect. So I hope that this really helps you guys. If you have any more questions, let me know. I've been here for seven years, so I've learned quite a lot. I've also been to every single state in Germany, so I can tell you as much as I possibly can. Feel free to leave your comments below. 
Otherwise, vielen, vielen lieben Dank und wie immer, bis später.